Good morning and welcome everybody. I hope you've had an opportunity to get some breakfast. Maybe if you all can hear me, maybe can you just give a little wave or a nod? Fantastic, wonderful. Well, before we begin, there are some people that I would like to thank. Um, uh, our uh, Matamidai High School Junior, Jack Carter and the piano for our morning entertainment. Thank you, Jack. The Mata Mirai Make It team for the stickers that you see on your table. For our Mata Mirai High School art students for sharing all of their artwork. If you've seen that beautiful pottery on the tables in the back, just gorgeous. So thank you so much for, for providing that for us this morning. Um, our Mata Mirai Middle School newspaper staff for the Zephyr Express that you see on the tables. Um, I had not seen that previously. It is so impressive. Flip through it. Um, really uh, entertaining and very informative. So um, thank you for that, middle school students. And then we have um, the Zephyr Muffins were a collaborative effort provided by the middle school and the high school cooking club. And the cinnamon rolls were provided by the high school baking and pastries class. So thank you for the goodies. And last but certainly not least, I would like to thank the Matamira High School staff and custodians for their help with all the logistics for the event. Oh, well, good morning, everybody. My name is Barbara White, and I serve on the board of MAFE, and I am so pleased that you are all here this morning with us. Um, thank you for being here today. We appreciate so much your support of MAFE. We could not do what we do without you. Um, and this morning is our opportunity um, to showcase for you uh, the um, effort and the contributions that you make and where it goes. And so we're excited to share all that with you um, and the Mata Mirai students that we'll be featuring today in our program. MAFE has been investing in our schools for 35 years, and over those 35 years, your donations have provided more than $3 million for classroom grants, post-secondary scholarships, and supporting basic needs for our students. That is incredible. Today, you will hear from our amazing students and staff about the excellent work that they are doing in our schools. Your donations have helped fund all of these programs. It's my pleasure right now to introduce you to the superintendent of Mata Mirai Public Schools, Barb Dufferin. Thank you. I wonder if I'll be. Uh, am I allowed to step out in front of this? Is that is that going to be okay if I do that? Okay. Well, thank you for being here this morning. It's so wonderful to be back again together. This year has been, a, we've had a great start, a very hopeful start for all of us. And um, so you're very much a part of that. And we could, there's so many things that we have to celebrate because of MAFE this morning. So I'm glad you're here. Um, and truly, you're not really here to hear me. You're here to hear from these students. And you'll be so impressed um, with what they have to share. Last year, we started off also somewhat hopeful and um, it was still and so it was still a difficult year last year and yet our staff came together and recognized that our students needed to feel connected they needed those relationships after a very disrupted year the previous year and so that was a really big focus for us last year how we could connect our kids to each other and to our staff and MAFE really helped us quite a bit with that with the fund need which I'll highlight in a minute but in spite of the difficulties of uh, COVID, we still had a lot to celebrate and a lot of accomplishments with our students. And I have some of them highlighted up here. And because I didn't bring a copy of that here, this is where I need to step in front of the microphone, if that's OK. And maybe, maybe I'll leave that here. Can you hear me if I step out and step back? Your turn. Is that OK with the mic? No. Thank you. OK, sorry. Um, so in spite of the difficulties, we still had eight National Merit Scholars. We still had students taking rigorous coursework. 353 students took AP courses and 287 took post-secondary education options courses for college credit or college and schools. We had 17 teams um, qualified for state competitions and four state championships when you include our activities as well. We had 10 all-state musicians, 
and that was our highest that we had ever had before. We had one student who qualified for nationals um, under the, as a state champion under the Minnesota Diesel Equipment Technology, and MAFE supported that student in um, the national competition to allow him to attend. And we also had 14 students who, and I think some of them you'll hear from today, 14 students presented research on arthritis, influenza, cancer, and COVID-19 at the National Experimental Biology Conference, which is actually um, a college level, a university level conference. Next slide, thanks. So last year when we talked to MAFE about what a fund need what we needed, what our district really needed, what our students really needed, we really focused on connections and having students really return hopeful and be able to pursue their passions and be reconnected and see what their interests are. And so a lot of our fund need that $36,000 raised has gone towards in doing more with students being able to explore their passions and career interests. And so I'll just, Briefly, we, we went after it at all levels and we asked each level to identify those ways that they could better connect our, our students and our families. I think you'll hear from a number of the groups today, but I do want to just highlight those alumni banners. You heard about the Mata Make It group. That is a new group, a student-led, student-initiated group that created those alumni banners um, in our Fab Lab, also a MAFE-funded area, um, and so that was, that was a student group. A number of our students came together and said, what are those things that we want to do? What kind of groups and clubs can we create? And Motto Make It came out of that. You'll also see that uh, the communication skills tools that um, we have, we had a Zephyr Influencers group last year that was created, and uh, they wrote their own stories, and they are, use communication tools to get out get out the stories about their schools. Our robotics teams, we have more robotics teams this year than we were able to fund because of the, the fund a need. And so in so many ways, the fund a need from MAFE helped us really spark, have students be able to say, this is what I wanna do, these are my interests, these are my passions, this is where I wanna go. And because of MAFE, we were able to say, will help you get there. So thank you to all of you. I will stop talking because I know who you're here for. So thank you so much for being here this morning. We really appreciate all of your support and prepare to be impressed. I recognize now that I'm also supposed to introduce you, it's my job, to introduce you to our next speakers. This is Alice Seufert and our students from, um, who are Gabriel, Kieran, and Ellery from our middle school, Madmidai Middle School Cooking Club. And Alice Seufert, who is our cooking club advisor. Good morning, uh, my name is Alice Swyford. I'm the communications coordinator for the district, but I also have another role in the district and that's the middle school cooking club advisor and I also teach cooking classes here in the district uh, for community ed. Um, so my background is, um, in cooking is that I have a passion for cooking. And last year, um, our superintendent kind of did the call out to all of us as staff of how, how can we share our passions, how can we connect with students. Um, I've cooked on TV on Twin Cities Live for about 13 years. I have two ebooks. I have a blog. And so I was kind of thinking about that of like, how do I share that passion um, with students and connect them? So we came up with this idea to do the Zephyr Cooking Club at the middle school. Um, it's been an awesome success. The kids love it, um, and that you're going to hear from them today. But what I want to highlight is how MAFE helped us do our work and how we've grown um, our cooking um, club and the program at the middle school. MAFE, through the fan, gave us um, six KitchenAid mixers. Um, we have um, Vitamix blenders. And if you know middle school students, they love smoothies. So that was really key. Um, we also have Instant Pots, which um, I think I would just share that helps our students learn some life skills. And some of those cooking tools are in our homes right now. And so we're teaching the middle school students how to use those. Um, we also um, were able, through the fan, to do some basics, like um, utensils, and then most recently buy some muffin tins, which seems really basic, but really makes a big difference. 
Um, so I think um, what I what I think I'll do. I have some notes of like what what kind of my reflections are about how cooking club and those classes have helped our students up there. Um, but I think you would love to hear from our students. Is that true? Yeah. <clears throat> Okay, so um, I will just introduce, so Kieran, Gabriel, and Ellery. Kieran is in seventh grade, Gabriel is in eighth grade, and Ellery is a sixth grader this year. So I'm gonna come around with a microphone and we're gonna start, the first question is, what do you enjoy most about the cooking classes and clubs at the middle school and why? I like cooking club because it brings people together. When cooking clubs started, there really wasn't much else to do except sports, band, theater, nada, that's it. <laughs> but cooking club has almost opened a door. It's let kids express themselves in cooking, which is really not an option before. And MAFE has given us lots. Is that the next question? <laughs> <laughs> um, when I started last year, I was in seventh grade, so it was fun for me to work with the younger kids and the older kids. I got to teach the younger kids how to work with butter, and then I got to learn from the older kids. This is my first year here, and I just feel like it's a great experience to just express yourself and just learn from others, and I feel like it just makes you feel like you belong. Okay, the next question, how has the new equip equipment that MAFE um, provided us helped you make recipes? As I was going to say in the next one and then remembered it was the other one, the other question, but ki the KitchenAid mixers, the muffin pans, like everything that MAFE has given us has helped us a lot. The KitchenAid mixers have given us just so much, just made everything easier. Just a total quality of life upgrade. <laughs> and the blenders, as I remember Alice saying quite a few times, these are the things that are in Jamba Juice. That got us hooked. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's just helped a great deal. We've made smoothies and they are fantastic. The muffin tins, don't even need to explain, some of you are eating muffins right now. <laughs> And utensils, again, those were just such a quality of life upgrade that it's hard to explain, honestly. But they help us in so many ways that we just take for granted. And once we realize, oh, we shouldn't take these for granted, these are things that MAFE has given us, we appreciate them more and more. Thanks, MAFE. So last year, me and Karen were in our first kitchen together and we made the blueberry muffins. The, when, since we didn't have the mixers yet, we had to use the hand mixers and we messed up with the butter and it wasn't light or fluffy, so it messed up with our muffins and they became raw. Um, as I heard that last year you had to use hand mixers and just thinking of it will just make your hand hurt. <laughs> um, the mixers that we now have make everything a lot easier because you don't really have to use your hands to do much. And also, the new um, equipment, like the blenders, make things more efficient, like, for example, the one we have at home, it's pretty old, and you sometimes find chunks in the smoothies. You do not want that. <laughs> so I'd like to say thank you to the mixers also, because it makes everything super efficient with their smoothness in the smoothies. <laughs> just want to say thank you so much to MAFE and thank you for the opportunity to have our students here and share their experiences with you today. Thanks to Alice, Gabriel, Kieran, and Ellery. Uh, <laughs> Good job. Um, I'd also like to introduce to you Scott Brisky, our pr principal of Wildwood Elementary, to share some of the MAFE-inspired and supported grants at the elementaries. Thanks, 
I uh, just realized that I am going to encourage my middle schooler to join the cooking club. I feel like that would benefit me greatly. So, <laughs> um, I get the pleasure to talk about some of the awesome things um, that were granted to Wildwood and O.H. Anderson through the grant process. And I too want to thank uh, the MAIF organization and all the contributors. Uh, we were able to get some really neat and um, cool things for our students that I'm going to talk about here in a couple of minutes. Um, our mission at Wildwood Elementary is to lay the foundational pathway of learner agency. And uh, when we started to look at the grants that we wanted to write, we started to look through the lens. Ooh, they turned it up on me. Um, usually I'm a loud talker. Uh, we looked at it through the lens of academics. We wanted to be able to enhance our academics. The curriculum that we're already using, we wanted to take it kind of to the next level. So we were looking at things that would flow into what we're already using, but then raise the bar, so to speak. We wanted things that were really engaging for our students, and we wanted to have this teamwork element. Coming out of COVID, we felt that we felt a little distant, we felt a little um, sporadic, we felt a little unconnected, and so we really wanted to have things that would bring our students and our staff together to build that teamwork. We also wanted a unique learning experience. We wanted something that was different, something that was cool, something that they wouldn't get um, at a different school or at a different place. And we wanted something that was fun. If it's not fun for five, six, and seven-year-olds, it's going to be a long road throughout their educational career. So we wanted something that was really cool, really fun, and really engaging, and I think we accomplished all those things. So the first um, thing that was granted to us is called breakout EDUs, and a breakout EDU essentially is an escape room. If you've ever been to an escape room, what they do is you, you pay a lot of money and they lock you in a room. We don't do that to children, but... Um, <laughs> It's essentially an escape room in a box. And um, what they do is they work together in teams, or they can work solo, or they can work as a whole class, and they find clues. And what's really neat is it's not super obvious. So this is one of the clues from one of the boxes that I took. And in this clue, what they have to do is they have to look at these magazines, they have to look at the numbers on the bottom, and they actually have to figure out where the direction would be in the United States, and then that's the code that they have to type in. But nobody tells them that, you just give this to them. So what it does is, it creates a ton of opportunity for math, literacy, science, um, and then all of those social emotional skills. We want our students to be able to work together. We want them to learn things that are really, really hard to teach, like perseverance, like failing, because when you do one of these things, you're gonna fail like 500 times before you get it right. And you have to try something different. And we want our students to be able to feel that. And this was a, this was a really cool um, tool that allowed us to do that in a fun way. Almost like they didn't realize they were learning. So um, I would encourage all of you to come to Wildwood, see it. Most of the time, teachers do it digitally, which is really neat. And um, some of the conversations that the kids are having, some of the things that they're, they're trying to come up with and solve the problems is really, is really, really cool to see. So what's the next one? Is it the Lou? I can't see it. Yes, awesome. All right. So the Lou, um, if you would walk into the gym at Wildwood or O.H. Anderson, you would see this ginormous projector with all of these like big, huge light bulbs on it. And you might think that we are going to be having a dance party, which we could with the Lou. Um, one thing that the Lou does really, really well is it engages the students. Um, it's really, it really has a high engagement. Um, there's a, it's technology, so what it does is it adds to physical education. So instead of just kicking a soccer ball, they are playing games that are interacting on a huge screen. So there's team games. For example, they might push a button, it gives them a mission, they have to go out and find something, bring it back, push another button, they get another mission. Um, you can incorporate math. So they may have math problems up on a board, they have to throw a ball at the answer, um, and then there's just some kind of just fun, really cool interactive games. So, um, I gotta switch my, my slide here. 
they check in. We use uh, zones of regulation at both Wildwood and OH Anderson, so they check in on how they're feeling, and it gives the teacher an instant report of how that class is doing. So if you got low energy that day, they may have to pump it up. If they have high energy that day, they may have to bring it down a little bit. <laughs> so um, they can do yoga, they can do mindful activities, they can do games with throwing and aiming, like I talked about. They can do cooperation and fitness games, which is really, really neat to see. They work in like teams of three and four, and like I said, they go out and they do these little missions, kind of like Mission Impossible. It's really neat. And then um, they can just do relaxing activities too. So um, like I said, it's, it's one of the tools that has really enhanced physical education. Um, and it involves all of the cognitive development and, and has that academic piece to it. So you're bringing academics and the physical into one place. All right, so our movement and sensory path. If you would walk into Wildwood and you would go straight and take a right down our music hallway, you would see a bunch of stickers on the floor. Um, they're much more than stickers to us. They are an intentional way to get our students moving and grooving um, during the day. So they can jump, hop, skip. Uh, they do little push-ups on the wall. And the reason that we have a sensory path and don't just you know, have students go out into the hallway and do jumping jacks is because it's intentional. Um, we want them to use their body intentionally and we want to be able to, again, add that academic piece to it. So we may have classes doing skip counting while they're jumping on the logs. We may have them um, doing sight words while they're counting on the logs. And there is literally not a student that walks by it that doesn't do it. I compare it to like you walk by, a, maybe not now, but when you're younger, if you walk by like a hopscotch on the sidewalk, it's almost impossible not to, you know, you just got to see if you still got it. That's how it is. So it's intentional and it's, uh, and it's really fun for our students. All right. So through the breakout EDUs, through the loo, through the, um, through the sensory path, uh, we have really been able to kind of reach our goal to seamlessly connect our academics, our social, emotional, and, and some of the physical things that we want our students to do. Um, and all of it surrounding a teamwork atmosphere. We want our students to be able to learn how to work together. We figure if they can do that when they're young, they'll be able to take those skills on to when they get older. They'll find that agency when they go to OH Anderson in the middle school and the high school, and we're just basically teaching them good fashion life skills. You see the picture on the right, I just, there's a lot of signs in yards because we're in an election year, but the ones that melt my heart are the ones that say class of 2035. So thank you again for all your donations and thank you for everything that you've provided our schools. MAFE is an awesome, wonderful organization. I was just telling somebody I've been in lots of different school districts and MAFE is, is, really, a, is really a gift. So thank you. I'm going to make a prediction that there's going to be a Top Chef contender somewhere that was in this program. You, hear, you heard it here first. Thank you. Uh, thank you to the students and to um, Principal Brisky for sharing this year, how this year's fund a need and grant donations are making an impact in our schools. I'm also reminded why this is my favorite MAFE event of the year, so I hope you're feeling inspired. Next, I'd like to welcome several leaders from our STEM clubs, our science, technology, engineering, and math. This year, we celebrate more than 10 years since Matamidae became the first high school in the nation to have a fab lab. And these students are gonna share with you the many ways that they use it. Please share, uh, students, your name, your grade, your favorite STEM activity, and your future plans. And I'm gonna remove the mic here and we'll, we'll get started on my right. Um, hi, my name is Anna Baldoff. I'm a senior here at Monomedi. And I've been going here for six years. 
And um, my favorite STEM experience, uh, well, it just it started in eighth grade when we can take a Fab Lab elective, and then that encouraged me to go on in high school to take four more engineering classes. And I realized that we really have a great um, platform here for an interest in STEM. And so um, in freshman year, I decided to join all of the STEM clubs I possibly could. <laughs> and so uh, I now am in the robotics team, the rocket team, and the STEM club. But I'm going to talk specifically on the STEM club. Um, I've been the president of the STEM club for two years now. And it's a really, really great program that um, works to share STEM throughout the entire district. And yeah, so you um, see we ran this event called the Celebration of the Fab Lab um, after 10 years. And um, it was a great way to show the amazing things that we've been able to do in the Fab Lab because of MAFE. Um, and their generosity has pushed our students to innovate. And um, yeah, so STEM Club runs two community events a year um, at least. and. We basically just share STEM and what we're doing here in the Fab Lab and partner with all the clubs we have here. Um, we also run two STEM programs in the district. So we run a STEM program across the street at the middle school, um, and we also do at the high school. And so both those places, we do these STEM challenges that teach all these kids about how to work together as a team and um, how to um, just uh, create something and using STEM. So it's it's a really great program and so throughout all of these events that we run every year I've gotten to know these club leaders and um, they're really great <laughs> and so you're gonna hear from them about all the other amazing programs we have here. So. All right, um, my name is Connor McCutcheon. I'm a senior and I've this is my second year at Mount Amidi. So having only one full school year at this school it's already like transformed my life with the STEM. Um, I, from the beginning, I was welcomed and given responsibilities and leadership roles, and it, it's really transformed my life. I've met all these wonderful people, and they've helped me build my skills in STEM, as well as the experience that I am learning to go into the field, hopefully, as I um, graduate. But I'm going to talk specifically on robotics, because perhaps that's like the only thing I had experience in before I got here. Um, if you're familiar with robotics, you'll know that they have different challenges, perhaps branches is a better term. And I came from a school that did these, did VEX, which is smaller robots, maybe this big. And it was more focused on the design aspect. But here at Matamidi, they have something called the first robotics challenge, which if you haven't seen, they're like our robot this year totaled 124 pounds. It's not small, and it's very impressive seeing what a small group of, I think, maybe 10 people built over the course of like four months. And having the opportunity to be a part of something that's been going for, I think, 13 years now was a huge transformation for all these people I've met from various age groups and various backgrounds. And last year was very special for us in particular because it was the first year in a long time that we were able to adequately perform on all of the um, pieces of the challenge at the tournament. In the past years, we'd like excel at one and not do great at the other, but we were able to um, split up tasks and work together and combine them by the end. And like, for example, there's climbing, we were able to do that. There's um, stagnant balls on the, the course we could pick up and shoot into various hoops. Um, we could traverse the course with ease, and we even managed to have some defensive capabilities, if you want to call it that, against other robots. Um, and so MAFE has really allowed us, and our other sponsors, of course, have allowed us to go to most of the tournaments and even a few um, mock ones. And all of that experience built up to this huge thing. If you get a chance to see it, I highly encourage it. Hello, my name is Caleb Hilton. I'm also a senior here at Matamidi. Um, I've been part of the Matamidi uh, community since kindergarten, and it's been a wonderful privilege to just kind of go up through the system and 
get to where I am today. But I want to talk to you about the Motto Make It Club, which is responsible for making all those stickers that you see at your tables today. We had the privilege of printing those out in our incredibly equipped Fab Lab, um, along with a lot of other materials as well. And I just feel so grateful that I get to work in that space because I have friends who are in engineering programs at colleges now, and they're like, man, I wish my college was as well equipped as that high school Fab Lab that I had. So. It's incredible um, and it's a wonderful experience to be able to work in there. And one theme that our, our other speakers talked a little bit about was just kind of that welcoming community and I can attest to that as well because I've never taken an engineering class at the high school but I was welcomed right into the STEM clubs as well. And um, I've become the leader of uh, our Motto Make It team and it's been a wonderful privilege of learning both the STEM side as well as the business side too. Like, learning how to write invoices and create workflow spreadsheets, communicate effectively. So we just have a lot of wonderful privileges for people of all ages and uh, different backgrounds that they can hop right in and they'll be welcomed into a, a wonderful spot and community. So thank you guys. Hi, I'm Kylie Farmer. I'm not a senior, I'm in 10th grade. Um, I've been going to Matamita since kindergarten. I am in the STEM club and rocket team. I'm gonna talk a little bit about rocket team today. Um, I am a co-leader in rocket team. Uh, usually in rocket team, we start out uh, designing around two to three foot rockets in um, a software called SpaceCAD that MAFE has uh, helped us um, acquire in the past. Um, once we've designed our rocket in SpaceCAD using all of the uh, details we can order parts for our rockets. Um, after that, we can build our rockets. We usually try to have two to three test launches before we try to qualify our launches. Um, um, so we have to make sure all of our details for our rockets meet the American Rocketry Challenge um, specificities. Um, so after we do our test launches, we do our qualifying launches. And if we are able to qualify, we can go to nationals, which we've done two times in the past. Um, MAFE has helped us get there in the past. Uh, we hope to go again in the future, but we're gonna have to work on that a little bit. <laughs> um, yeah, I've had a lot of fun in Rocket Team. Last year, we tried very hard to qualify, but uh, my rocket got stuck in a tree the morning of qualifying. <laughs> So we had to build a rocket very fast that day. <laughs> um, we were pretty close to qualifying, but we didn't make it. But it was still a very fun experience. I've learned a lot about STEM in my two years of being on Rocket Team. And I really just love the community around it and how welcoming they have been. Um, yeah. <laughs> Um, hello, my name is Angus McChesney. Um, I'm a senior here, and what sparked my, I've always been vaguely interested throughout um, elementary and middle school in the STEM fields. And what really sparked my interest was when I got drafted by Mr. Farmer to join Real World Design Challenge. Um, and since then, I've been more involved in the STEM activities that we have here. And right now I'm taking uh, a class, Digital Electronics one which is basically where you learn about circuits and um, you learn how to build them, different aspects, different parts. Um, and right now we're working on a Boolean project to uh, make sure that, using transistors to make sure that different switches make different lights turn on. So if you have two switches on, you'll have a certain light on. Um, yeah, that's all I have to say. <laughs> Hi, um, my name is Brady Lawrence. I'm a senior here, and I've been attending Matamidai schools since seventh grade. Uh, I've been a part of the engineering and STEM community here since eighth grade when I also took the Fab Lab course at the middle school. Um, and my main like area of focus has been the Real World Design Challenge. Um, I've been a part of it for four years, and this is my second year being a team leader. Um, so what we do at Real World is early in the school year, we are given a design challenge, and we take then the better part of the rest of the school year, use the equipment and the software in the Fab Lab to design a solution to that challenge. And then we were also able to present our solution to a panel of judges for scoring. Um, and through these programs, 
I've developed a lot of skills in research, presentation, general engineering and design skills, as well as a lot of teamwork since we work in teams of seven or eight. Um, and I can use these skills a lot in my hopefully future in college studying either computer science or aerospace engineering. Hi, I'm Isaiah Horsager. I'm a senior here at Mind Media High School. And uh, yeah, the STEM clubs really sparked my interest in middle school as well during the first semester elective class that I got to take. I was really interested after that. And now I'm the leader of a Real World Design Challenge team here at the high school. And I've learned a lot of things from being able to be in that club, especially about leadership, uh, team leadership, collaboration uh, in a STEM environment, which has been really helpful to me. So last year, we placed third in the national competition, which is the best we've done so far. And they have been all online for the past few years because of COVID. But this year, it's going to be in person. And we're going to have the opportunity to go if we win because of MAFE. So that's really nice. And uh, yeah, one of my favorite experiences in STEM in the last four years uh, was my second year in Real Design Challenge, where I thought of a package delivery system um, design. And I was able to design that, uh, model it on CAD programs, and then actually 3D print and laser cut a prototype for that, which I now have a patent pending on that design. And I never would have been able to achieve that without all the amazing equipment we have at the Fab Lab in the high school. So yeah, in the future, I'm probably going to attend Georgia Tech and study uh, mechanical engineering and computer science. And uh, a lot of those skills that I've learned in Real Design Challenge and at the Fab Lab are definitely going to help me with that. So I'm really grateful. Thank you, students, for sharing your amazing work with us. We appreciate it. You guys can go ahead and, and head out. Thank you. That was amazing. Our next speakers are Dan Kazar and Carrie Gilland. Dan is a science and engineering teacher at Matamirai High School, and Carrie is the assistant principal. They're going to share with us about the growth of career and technical education programs at Matamirai High School. Hi, good morning, everyone. I'm Dan Kazar, as you heard. Um, science engineering teacher here at Matamirai High School. Also work with a lot of those kids in some of the clubs here, and honestly, I, I could probably just walk away because I think what they said speaks volumes more than what I probably could say about our programs. Um, but I know one of the biggest things is the strength of our clubs comes from kind of the strength of our engineering program that we've been able to build through the support of MAFE, especially with Again, the development of the Fab Lab, which you heard was the first uh, MIT certified Fab Lab at a high school in the nation. Um, so that was kind of a, a big deal. And I know the 10 year celebration really gave us a chance to kind of look back and reflect on where we started and kind of where we're going. And I know with the introduction of the Fab Lab, we became one of the most innovative high schools in the nation. And there were schools coming from all over to tour and see what we were doing. And that's kind of where Mata Midai likes to be, at that cutting edge of what we're doing. And as we continue to grow and develop in our engineering program, we keep looking at how do we take that next step? How do we offer our students experiences beyond what they'd be able to expect at any other high school? How do we get to that point where we are that pinnacle of what other schools want to be in this nation? And I think a lot of that and a lot of what we've been able to do and continue to do comes down to a lot of the support we've gotten from MAFE. Um, so I know past couple years, and good, pictures are up there, um, one of the biggest changes is we looked at changing trends in kind of careers and fields out there for engineering, for people who are just going into the job force, whatever it is. And the future is electronics, if you have not heard. Um, so we decided we were woefully unpreparing students to go into these career fields where they would have to engage with this, even if they weren't going to be an electrical engineer, like a student leaving a high school and going and working at a manufacturing facility has to deal with robots. So we introduced our digital electronics courses, uh, digital electronics one, we called our robotics and coding course. It's been running now for this is our third year, and last year went to MAFE coming out of the pandemic as we were coming back in person and said, we are under 
we, we have too little equipment for the number of students that are signing up and what we're hoping they get out of this course. And so you can see the generous uh, grant I received from MAFE last year and kind of what it's provided for that space. We were able to convert one of our science classrooms into a fully stocked digital electronics lab. And all of the equipment you see in the drawers, much of the equipment you see on the shelves, that was all provided from MAFE. So it's offering students that opportunity, as you heard Agne Angus talking about, um, getting in developing circuits based on logic chips and transistors. And as we move on, we're gonna get into more robotics and some more complex electronics like that. And as we continue to look forward, um, looking at kind of what is the next step. We have our Digital Electronics 2 course running for the very first time in spring, and we're working right now with different vendors and different manufacturing companies from around the Twin Cities area, looking at what do these students need. So a lot of that is looking at actual industry components, and I know one piece of equipment that I've kind of got my eye on, and we're talking with folks at Dell Core Systems, if you've heard with them, um, we're looking at an actual FANUC robot. So an industrial robotic arm, six axis, capable of doing all sorts of different things. So they use them in welding, they use them in packaging. And it's something that we have a vendor who has a supply that we'd be able to get something like that in the, the lab. So really look in, what are those big next steps we're looking to take? And we know that we're going to be able to do it because we have this wonderful group here and the support of MAFE. So thank you very much. It's not only hard to follow students, but hard to follow Dan, too. So bear with me. Um, and, and today, so you've seen all sorts of examples and inspirational stories about what Dan is talking about, that career in tech ed piece. Um, and career in tech ed is not new. It's probably something that maybe some of you took in high school as well, too. Um, but as Dan said, we feel like it's the wave of the future now. We feel like there's more demand um, from industry. There's more demand for our kids to know different skills um, and be ready to leave high school um, having some of the skills that, that you've heard today, whether it's culinary skills, it's electronic skills, um, it's working in, uh, we have art programs that um, are up and coming in our career and tech ed too. Um, and so what career and tech ed really focuses on is still that academic knowledge but what I love about it is it also combines those technical skills too. And it gives students an opportunity to not just learn in the classroom, but then to take that learning as Dan said, and as you heard from students, and to really apply it. Um, and when I talk to kids that are in the CTE classes, their, their whole world just lights up. You know, when they tell you about their EMT class or how they're getting to work with animals or how they can um, spend two hours of their day you know, fixing a truck. And it's, it's not the same experience here um, that they start with, but what's cool about it is they can take their learning that they had here in Monomedi and then bring it out into, um, into the world. So our CTE kids um, have that opportunity. They also have several opportunities, as Dan mentioned, to build those professional networking skills, working with a lot of our area businesses. Um, they can earn certifications, things like first aid and CPR, OSHA 10. Um, we have kids that are, are walking away from high school with a serve safe certification, um, which is a really cool opportunity for our learners to go into that next step of their lives um, and have that on their resume. Um, so again, why CTE? Why do we see it as sort of the wave of, of the future or our next step here at Monomedi? Um, is because it, it combines that exceptional learning experience, that academic excellence, um, but that it really helps inspire kids. You heard all those great stories about how you know, they see themselves now taking uh, what they've learned in, in becoming mechanical engineers or becoming um, chefs or becoming um, veterinary technicians. And so for me personally, it's, it's cool to hear those stories. Um, it's cool to see kids in those classes. Um, and again, with the support of MAFE, uh, we're giving them that opportunity, not just here at the high school, but you heard Scott talk about it too, down um, all the way down at Wildwood um, and, and beyond. Um, these are the pathways. So this is sort of what we're looking at when we talk about uh, our career and tech ed pathways. Uh, we currently have 291 students that are enrolled. Those are unique students. So out of our 1,100 that we have here at the high school, 291 of those students are participating in some form of career and tech ed class, uh, which is up about 50 to 60 students from last year. So it is a, a growing opportunity for kids. Um, you can see some of the classes, the courses that they're taking, everything from culinary to healthcare, uh, law enforcement, 
carpentry. There's a really cool program where our kids get to build a house. Um, they did that last year in North St. Paul. Um, and again, it's just, it's a source of pride. It's, it's that personal success that we want for all of our students. So it's been awesome to see um, kids participating in those opportunities. As Dan mentioned, um, we have some new course opportunities coming through engineering um, with our, our engineering program and our robotics program uh, with digital electronics. And then we have um, our art program also getting on board, talking about making things um, for industry that are more um, creative in the art world. And so you see things like pottery or the stickers. Um, how can we combine those elements that they're learning in science and engineering with also what they're learning in art um, and have that cross-departmental collaboration as well too. So again, my, my presentation probably isn't as fancy and inspirational, but I just wanted to talk a little bit about what it is that we see um, as future support um, for MAFE and ways that um, you can help support all of our learners. So thank you again. Thank you for all your support. We truly appreciate it. Um, and thank you for being here this morning too. Thank you, Dan and Carrie. I beg to differ, Carrie, it was inspirational. <laughs> Our next speaker is uh, Julie Rowling. Julie is a mental health counselor at Matamidai Public Schools, and she's going to tell us about how MAFE Angel Fund supports students and families in the district. Thanks, Julie. Well, I bucked the system again, and I'm sitting over with all of you, <laughs> with my daughter back there, and all I could think about was my first priority at this presentation is making sure she is safe and comfortable, and it really just reflects the families on my caseload and the families that I intersect with through my job. They're doing everything they can to get their kids to school, to help have stable homes and families and keep them safe. And it's a struggle for them. They, they struggle with finances. They struggle with um, not being evicted. <laughs> they struggle with having clothes for their kids, having school supplies, having enough food. And my entire job is to help stabilize the families so the kids can get to school and access all of these fabulous programs that we've heard about. So I, just a little about myself, I've been in this role for 16 years. My first eight, I was contracted through Canvas Health as kind of a mental health professional here. Then the district hired me and now I've been here for eight years, but it's 16 years in this role. I work specifically in special ed, but I've done a ton of outreach, uh, like with the backpack program. I ran the, um, the summer bashes a while ago for years with the school supplies. I've done a ton with the general population, but in general, my caseload is special ed and then usually families that struggle with all of these financial hardships that I'm talking about. Suzanne hears from me weekly. I request probably more than anyone else from the basic needs program. I've had very few of my requests um, not approved, and if they aren't, I work with MAFE and other organizations to get, get what's needed for the family. So I feel like MAFE really um, closes the circle and completes the gap for these families so that they can get their kids to school safe and access education. I wanted to just tell you a few things that I request so that you know where your money is going. Um, often I'm requesting um, help with clothing, like I said, shoes, food, hygiene projects, gas for families to get to and from work or to and from doctor's appointments for their kids all just kind of basic needs that I take for granted often. And then I have some really obscure requests that often surprise me. Uh, a few are eye patches and glasses for kids, assistance with like medication co-pays, a lot of the kids I work with, and their um, parents are on meds and they can't get what they need to kind of stabilize that you know, physical piece for them, so I, I get um, funding for that. Things just like bedding, pillows, curtains so that kids can sleep well. I've had families that have requested help with moving, um, U-Hauls, storage units, locks, when they're being evicted and we need to get them into shelters. They need places for their things to go until we can get them in stable housing again. MAFE has helped with lunch account payments for kids, um, baby supplies, diapers and formulas. So just the gamut of everything. I always get super nervous coming and talking to me, but I always hear great things about kind of what our district and what I'm doing. So I really super appreciate you all coming. Your support really, again, closes the gap and, and really helps the families on my caseload get their kids here so they can learn and be successful. So thank you so much. Thank you, Julie. That's important work. We appreciate it. Um, 
We're gonna welcome up our last student group here. Um, let me see. Uh, our, final, our final panel this morning are going to share uh, exceptional learning experiences at Maramira High School. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna ask each of them to share their name, their grade, future plans, and what makes your experience exceptional at Maramira. And we'll start right over here. Hi, my name is Eleanor Anderson. I'm a senior here at Mata Mirai. Um, I think those are the things. And um, I'm a leader of our, one of the leaders of our base club. Base is building awareness surrounding equity. Um, base focuses mostly on conversations and education of both the members and um, things in the community about inequities, not just racial, but people of the LGBTQ community, um, you know, gender, those kind of things as well. Um, and BASE has been such an incredible opportunity. I joined last year. I um, didn't feel like I had very many close relationships with peers and um, I went to a teacher to talk about it and he told me to join BASE and so I showed up and I really found a community of um, other people who I'd, you know, known. I've been in the district since kindergarten so I knew most of the faces but, um, to have conversations and be taking action about real world issues really made me feel like I um, have an impact in this community. Um, and it has really inspired me to want to pursue a career in public service. I'm hoping to study political and science, political science and government um, at college next year, but applications are still out and not back yet. Don't know where I'm going, so. <laughs> Um, my name is Kaya Rumeli. I'm a senior this year at the high school, and I wanted to talk about an experience I had last year in my AP language and composition class. So Mrs. Halverson actually gave us an assignment during our persuasive writing unit to write a letter, and in the letter she wanted us to talk about a complaint we had or something we wanted to change. And at the time I had been doing a lot of studying for the ACT, and I was fortunate enough to, had par to have parents who were able and willing to pay for extra resources like the prep class offered through the high school and also a private tutor to help me study. But in doing so, I felt a bit guilty just knowing the inequity between students who, like me, were able to afford those extra resources and then students who weren't able to afford those luxuries. So that's what I decided to write about in my letter. And I actually wrote my letter to MAFE. So in my letter, I just detailed having MAFE use their MAFE money to cover the cost of the ACT prep class ACT prep book and taking the test more than once, which are all things that cost a pretty good chunk of money and I thought were pretty essential to earning the best score possible on the ACT. And I sent my letter to MAFE. I wasn't really expecting much, you know. I thought MAFE was probably pretty busy and they probably wouldn't prioritize a 17 year old's ideas, but MAFE is amazing and they asked me to present at their next meeting, which I agreed to. The presentation went well and they were on board with my idea. So about three months after I wrote that rough draft, there is now a fund need that exists to cover the costs of those resources that I mentioned for any students who need it, which is pretty amazing to say that an idea I had my junior year could benefit so many students. And I think this really pushed me to have more confidence in myself and my ideas, which led me to run for the school board representative spot, which I did win, which is amazing. So now I'm the student rep that attends the school board meetings. And I think it's fair to say that without Mrs. Halverson in this assignment really pushing me outside of my comfort zone, I wouldn't really know the scope of what my ideas could change in our school and in our world. So yeah, thank you. Um, I'm Lauren Gomez, I am a junior, so like I probably won't have my future plans because my future plans will be being here for another year, yay! Um, but I am going to talk a little bit about the theater program and how it has benefited me. Um, I have been in theaters since like elementary school even, but that was when I was an actor, which bad days, bad days. Um, but then in middle school I found crew opportunities so I didn't have to be on stage and like have like stage fright and be like, oh my God, people are staring at me. So I was given the opportunity to stage manage my freshman year, which is like kind of like a very high role for a freshman to take on because it's a lot of um, like a lot of writing down things and like keeping track and making sure that every single person within the theater, including the director, is on task. 
which is a lot for like a freshman to manage. But through getting that opportunity, I have since um, stage managed a couple of other shows. And right now, actually, the play that is opening this weekend, Almost Main, I stage managed. And because of the opportunities that the um, faculty, Dennis Jocelyn, Joan Fitch, and Mr. Garls have given me, I was actually able to get a job at the high school that pays me money. Um, and I was also able to stage manage a show at a community theater that also gave me a pretty good chunk of money. And so that helped me further my ability to do these kind of th kinds of things in the future because it's something I'm very passionate about. And I just want to thank Matamidi so much because without <clears throat> um, just like pushing me outside of my comfort zone and being like, hey, you want to take on this job that usually juniors and seniors do as a freshman? Um, I wouldn't be where I am today, and so I'm just very thankful for Matamida and what they've given me. Um, hi, my name is Anusha, and I'm a senior at Matamida. Um, I've been going here for six years now, and um, I'm going to be talking about math team today. So I'm part of our school's math team, and I have been for the past four years, and it's just been a really, really great experience for me overall. Um, so what we do at math team is basically we practice every week, and then we have five meets throughout the year where we kind of meet at different locations across the metro and compete with different schools. Um, and in the past two years, we've actually gotten second and third place at state. So it's been a really gratifying experience as well. Um, but math team has just really taught me a lot of skills like collaboration. And it's also really helped me with problem solving skills, as well as like thinking more conceptually. Um, one part of it that I've really appreciated is just um, kind of learning how to apply my learning in school to different um, aspects and to different problems that kind of can be applied to the real world. Um, and in that way, it's really like inspired me to pursue um, a major in maybe economics and data science because I realized that I really enjoy applying what I learned to the real world when it comes to mathematical concepts. So yeah, it's just been a really great experience and I'm really thankful that I got the opportunity to do it. Hi, my name is Fatima Ba. I'm a junior and for a while now, I've always been interested in my science classes. I've always had a passion for science. So last year, I decided to join the high school's MAPS team, which stands for Modeling a Protein Story, where we get to research a specific protein and how that protein can be used in the medical field. So our specific group researched how antibodies from llamas can help provide treatment for COVID-19. And the experience I had in MAPS team was pretty different than the experience I've had in any of my science classes in terms of me being able to initiate what I wanted to learn. I got to choose what I wanted to research, and I think that because I was able to choose what I wanted to research, it made it a lot more rewarding at the end when we finished our research and we made our poster. And another way MAPS team has influenced me is that it helped me um, learn how to go out of my comfort zone. As a member of MAPS team, we have to reach out to different organizations such as MAFE and other organizations to ask for grants to help fund our travel to the annual biology conference. And also at this conference, we have to present to a large group of people, anywhere from high schoolers like me, all the way to professors and researchers around the globe. So I'm very appreciative and grateful that I was able to join MAPS team. Um, hi, my name is Amal. I'm a junior at Matamira, and I've been attending here for two years. Um, a unique experience for me was having Mr. Lane as a biology teacher last year, my sophomore year. Um, although I did learn a lot about biology from Mr. Lane, I also learned how not to be afraid to ask for help when I really need it. I learned to be uncomfortable. I learned to be comfortable in uncomfortable situations, and I also learned how to advocate for myself. Um, although as of right now, after high school, my future plans are so undecided because of him. He has um, definitely, um, sorry. Um, although my future plans are undecided, he did boost my confidence and my abilities. So um, because of him, I was very, I'm very appreciative of him because he did help me um, decide to stay at Matamira and see what I can do at the school. So thank you.
Hello everyone, my name is Henry Zhang and I'm a senior here at the high school and I've attended Mar Mirai since I was in sixth grade and from my experience here at Mar Mirai, I want to talk about my experience of being a peer mentor for the special education students here at Mar Mirai. And so when I was first offered the opportunity to, uh, to be a peer mentor for these students, I was hesitant, but I'm really thankful that I grasped the opportunity and took it. And so every day in my second semester of uh, junior year, I would help these uh, students learn everyday life skills that we take for granted. And I never expected all the great joys that would come out of this experience. Like, I, it was such a joy to teach these students and see them grow from when we first started to when we ended. And it was, it was a great honor to, be a, uh, to work with Miss Suzanne Erickson, the teacher for those students and the paraprofessionals. And it was like, I was like their coworker, <laughs> which was really fun. And it was a really great joy to see how I myself grew from that opportunity. I learned about communication and social skills. I learned about being patient and uh, perseverance. And I learned about people who are di physically different than me, but they're the same and that they are wonderful human beings. Thank you, students, for sharing your experiences. I appreciate it. I think you guys have to go to class now, don't you? <laughs> Thank you again. I would like to welcome up my uh, board colleague, Kate Blomberg, to close out our morning program. And um, yeah, it's just thank you again, everybody. Thank you, Barb. Thank you everyone for being here this morning. I know we're running a little over, so I'll be quick. Um, I hope you were as impressed as I was by these amazing students and teachers. So let's, I know they're leaving, but let's give them another round of applause. <laughs> it was so wonderful to hear firsthand all the great things these students are doing. We appreciate your support of MAFE, which allows us to invest in these incredible experiences. And as Julie said, in some of these cases, help meet the basic needs of our students. Your gifts help create these exceptional learning opportunities, which in turn prepares our students for future careers and other pathways. Whether this is your first time hearing about MAFE or you're a longtime supporter, we appreciate you taking the time to come this morning and for considering a gift in support of our work. As we kick off our fall fun drive, which you will likely hear about, you'll find envelopes as you walk out the door today. On your programs, there's a QR code if you feel inspired to make a gift. I'd also invite you to take one of the things in the middle of your table, there's a QR code that directs you to our website if you'd like to learn more about our work. If you plan to stay for a tour, you can meet by the piano area. Otherwise, have a great day, and we hope to see you all at our 35th anniversary celebration, which will take place on March 31st. Thanks again.